Hey everybody, um, just wanted to jump on and make a quick video to show you guys my workflow for editing uh, the 360 uh, virtual tour photos that I do with my Theta Z1. Um, I'm going to run through, uh, through it real quick and just do the edit before I explain how I'm doing it. That way you can see just um, how quickly I can get through each image and then I'll go back at the end and kind of explain what, uh, what I did and then how hopefully you can uh, adapt that to, to your workflow. So essentially I shoot everything just in a standard HDR um, mode on the Z1 and I make sure that uh, like if I'm shooting an image like this that's got some skylight, I'll bring the uh, exposure down. Uh, I'm shooting in auto and I keep my ISO as low as possible. I think it, I have it set now for 200 is the maximum ISO. So you can play around with the exposure and get it um, uh, so it's not completely blown out and then you can really save some of this detail by editing in this uh, the process that I use. So again I'm going to run through it just real quick in my normal standard pace uh, how I would ed edit this photo and then I'll go back and um, kind of explain each each way step by step. So um, I start, uh, I use Bridge, Adobe Bridge instead of Lightroom so uh, I right click my image uh, even though it's a JPEG I'm still going to edit it in Camera Raw and then um, first thing I'm going to do here is try to bring this the highlights back so just bring this down bring my shadows up here <clears throat> a little bit of noise reduction Get rid of some of the chromatic stuff with the fisheye. There's my before and after. It's pretty good. So now go over here and um, use my eyedropper tool to use my color checker and get the color more correct. Uh, that's a little bit too green. That's pretty close to what it was that day. So um, actually I'm gonna bring some of these shadows up a little bit more. I think the outside part is just fine. A little bit more contrast. So there we go. Before and after. Uh, might be a little yellow, so I can go in here, bring some of the yellow out if I want. But um, I'm happy with um, I'm happy with that. Open the image. <clears throat> it's going to open it in Photoshop. And I have these. Um, Actions already set up so I can edit the, the tripod out of the photo uh, and it'll convert it to a, um, a circular image. So um, this one here, I can even go in and still uh, edit a little bit more. I'm going to duplicate this layer. I can go in here and bring the shadows down a little bit. Don't want to do, or don't want to do anything with the shadows, so I'm going to bring that all the way down. Leave it at zero. I'm going to bring the highlights down. There we go. better. <clears throat> so now I'm going to convert it to a circular image using my action. Go in here with the spot healing tool and get rid of my tripod and that little whatever that was on the floor. Pretty good. <clears throat> going to convert it back. flatten it and that's it and I'm gonna save it we're gonna save this uh, in my test folder as test one save it as a JPEG I uh, use standard and that one's done so now we can open up the um, theta viewer and take a look at this image um, I had had it in there from earlier And this is what we got. So that is our edited image. Uh, pretty good detail. It's still a little yellow back here, but that's that's okay. A little yellow and green. Um, I don't think it looks completely out of whack. Um, I didn't add any sharpening to this particular one. Uh, 
I think it looks good. Uh, I'd be happy with this one. Again, this one was just my test to get my colors correctly. Um, I can compare that uh, to my color checker and make sure that everything is, is rendered accurately. I use that a lot for product photography, uh, and it definitely saves your, uh, saves your cookies sometimes. So especially when you're using mixed lighting, I definitely recommend going and get one of those. Uh, I can put a link in the descriptions at the bottom. So um, if you want to pick one of those up, I think they're about a hundred bucks, uh, but it's definitely worth it. So, um, so that's the final edited image. So let's go back and um, let's just open, uh, actually, I'm going to go back and I'm going to open this and convert it back to everything as what it was default uh, with no changes. So we can get a look at, um, you know, what we were, what we were dealing with before. Okay. So um, now, if I want to go in here and I want to open that in the theta and get a before and after, um, I need to remember where I put it. And it was in Backroom 360, and it was this one. So I'm going to copy that just to make it easier to find. I'm going to copy it and paste it there. So that okay. So this was the um, Theta viewer. This was the edited version. So now we can put the original unedited JPEG in and see the difference. So. Um, a little bit blue um, go back to the original or the uh, the edited version colors are rendered a little bit better it's a little bit a little bit more saturated um, but um, I found that once you get it uploaded to cloud panel panel and viewing it online um, those translate well as opposed to uh, something that's maybe a little bit more flat so um, that is how quick it is to, to edit a photo. Um, I took a little longer because I explained some of it, but now I'll go back and um, uh, go a little bit slower. That way people that uh, really want to kind of see what we did there can can maybe add this to the workflow. So again, I open it in um, Adobe Bridge, and I open it in Camera Raw, and then I'm essentially just uh, treating this JPEG as it was a raw file. So as long as I'm not saving it and then going back and then opening that saved file and having generation loss in the edit, you're, you're not really going to have a ton of um, visible loss for, for this kind of photo, I don't think. So um, now if you go in and you know save it three or four times and, and you're uh, using that, that edited photo, that's when you're going to really notice a difference. But um, you know one time you're not going to um, have that big of a, a noticeable um, degradation but um, so I just go over here to the highlights. Like I mentioned before, you can really bring that down a lot. Um, obviously, if you shoot it and it was blown out this bad before and there's no detail at all, um, you might have some difficulties um, recovering some of that data that's in there. So that's why when I shoot in the HDR mode, I will put it in like a, a minus one exposure or minus 0.7 exposure. Um, depending on you know what I'm looking at, so always look at your photo after you take the first first few after you actually look at all of them. But you know look at the trouble spots as you're shooting them and try to get as much right in camera. But uh, but yeah, you can bring the highlights down a lot, um, bring some of the shadows up. I try to do as much of that in this camera raw editor uh, than than in Photoshop just to get it as close as possible. And then in Photoshop I can tweak that a little bit more. So um, this one uh, can bring my my black level down, a little contrast. Since I did bring my shadows up a lot, I will want to go over here to noise reduction. Uh, a lot of people use Topaz, um, different plugins in Photoshop that you can use. Uh, I have one um, that's I think it's Nix. It's Define, uh, Define Two I think is what I use. Um, but sometimes I don't even need to use that in this because this noise reduction in the camera all works just as, as well. Um, the chromatic aberration removes some of the stuff in here uh, in the lines. 
not super noticeable, but if you're really zooming in during in, in the middle of the actually viewing the tour, you can see it. Um, and then I think that's pretty close. Uh, now, last thing I want to do is I want to fix my color balance. So that's where this uh, x right color checker will come in, the spider checker. Um, I've got two different whites. Uh, then it starts doing shades of gray. And I found that usually the second or the third one uh, will give me the most accurate representation of the light. So that's pretty pretty close to where it was. Now, since I've already edited this one real quick for the demo and we know that it, was a, it might be a little bit yellower, more yellow than I want, I can always come up here and adjust that down just a touch uh, if I want. But this thing will get you pretty accurately close to what you were uh, well, not accurate. It will get you accurate to what it looked like when you shot, whether you're using a flash for standard photography or mixed lighting. Um, but um, I, I definitely recommend going and buying one of those. So I can't say enough about that. Um, so after it's done, when we open it in Photoshop, <clears throat> that's the first one that we did. And we'll just leave that up so we can compare. <clears throat> um, and I'll duplicate a layer here so we can see the changes that we made. You can also go up here to Image Adjustment and then Shadows and Highlights. That's going to allow you to control the shadows and highlights a little bit more. I don't want any of the shadows to come up. I want the shadows to stay as dark as possible. So I'm going to put that back to um, zero. I don't want to affect those at all. I just want to affect these highlights. So let me zoom in here. I can kind of get an idea uh, by playing around with that, like really how much you can change. Now you need to make sure that you're looking at the entire photo too, not just what's in here unless you decide to you know um, mask something off. But um, you know by changing that it's changing the, the, the highlights on my face and other places of the photo too so it's it's looking a little bit bad there um, but uh, we can again we can mask that area off and just make those changes in that area or uh, you can erase or um, just find it try to find a middle ground again I find that um, for these um, the whole name of the game is speed when you're editing as many of these 360 photos to put the tour together. So you want to keep your um, time spent editing down as low as possible. Uh, that way you can maximize your uh, your profits for um, for the time spent to putting these things together. Um, so there we go for that one. Um, might be a little bit overdone over here. So you know if I really wanted to get crazy, I could go in and just for this particular one maybe erase some of it just so it's not as noticeable really the only thing I was wanted to change was the uh, outside stuff there so that's probably good <clears throat> um, I'm going to flatten it and then um, I, as I mentioned before I have these um, actions that I already set up. There's another YouTube video to show, um, I think it's it, it's labeled um, how to remove the tripod from your photos. So I show you in that how to set these actions up. This will really save you a lot of time. I'm using an older version um, of Photoshop CS6 so it doesn't have the ability to edit 360 photos or view them in like I think the um, Photoshop uh, Creative Commons ones, the new one, the new version does. So this is kind of a workaround for those of us that are using the old version still. But um, I've got it set. Uh, first, you have to rotate the document, and then it changes the coordinates. Um, but I've got it set up as an action, so I just put it on start, click the button, and now I can zoom in and either use my clone tool or my um, spot healing to get rid of whatever that thing is there. And then I can also do the same with, with my tripod. I just think this is a... a I think this looks better than um, a big blurry thing. Some people have a, a spot with your logo made that you can put there. I mean, it's really up to you. 
I like the the look of nothing really there. I might sometimes put my logo on one, like the home image on the on the first page, um, but for the most part, I like to get rid of it. So, and then my action to switch it back. And there we go. So I'm curious to see just uh, if I fit that on screen and then go back to the first edit that I did real quick, how close they are. Um, so that's the first one that I did just real quick before at the beginning of the video. And then that's the second one that I did. So um, actually the second one came out a little bit better, I think, looking at it. So, um, you know, you get an idea of it's pretty pretty close, pretty, pretty similar. Um, but... It doesn't take too long um, to put those uh, those edits together. Test two, we'll save that. <clears throat> Obviously, if you're working on a virtual tour that has 150 um, shots, it's going to take you more time. But um, you know, depending on what that particular job pays and what it's worth for you, um, and the quality output level that you want. Again, I found that. I've had really good luck with uh, with this quality. I'm really happy with it, and it does save a lot of time because I don't have to worry about stitching. It's all stitched automatically, um, just in camera, as long as I convert it back to that um, that particular um, aspect ratio and everything. Keep it original. So there was our first sh shot, our first edit. Take a look at our second edit. And I think that one came out better. So a um, little bit noisier here, um, but again, I didn't run any noise noise reduction in there. And I think for the most part, um, you know, when you're viewing it uh, standard, it's not going to be that noticeable. But uh, there you go. So um, that is our uh, second edit. We'll go back to what the original looked like. See the difference. And I mean, even that one is, it, you know, it's 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 passable. It's a little bit blown out here, but um, you know, it really just depends on the quality and the look that you want uh, out of your shots. But uh, I think um, I think either one of those would be passable. But this really helps you to um, re-edit and bring down bring down the uh, the lights in there. So maybe would have. If I really wanted to get picky, it might be a little bit too saturated here. Uh, might be closer uh, in the original, uh, but also that was color color balance too. So, um, but that's it. Pretty happy with how that came out. So, if you have any questions, uh, hit me up in the uh, comment section or uh, shoot me a message, and um, hopefully that will help you add some uh, um, tricks to your workflow and getting you some really good high quality 360 images. And um, as always, like, subscribe, and um, follow G. Watson Images on Facebook and uh, also uh, Instagram as well as Alpha Virtual 360. Thanks, guys.